Hi everybody, Rose Thorne here. So today I'm reacting to a live stream from Foodie that's in progress now called Your Hate Clouds Your Judgment. And I'm warning you guys right now, I am not gonna be nice to Foodie today. I am not gonna be nice to Foodie. And why I'm not gonna be nice to her is because Gary Unfiltered just finished up a live stream where he was explaining to his members why in a month or two, he's going to have to demonetize his content and it has to do with his disability and making sure that his disability benefits uh, won't be threatened by his income on YouTube. So he was very vulnerable today. You know, he basically just laid it all out there in a very honest way. And it was well received by everybody. Everybody understood. But Foodie decided that she was going to take it upon herself to get in her live stream and during her part of her live stream, she was going to talk badly of Gary. And so that's put me in a bit of a mood, as you can understand, because I'm part of the unfiltered squad. I'm a mod for Gary. And I don't think it's right for her to say the things that she's saying about Gary. So there's that, plus the other things she's going off about in her live stream. And I'm just going to let her have it. That's just how it's going to be today for this react anyway. So let me just go ahead and share the screen so you guys can see what I'm looking at. So there's Foodie. You know, she's supposed to not talk about Natter. She's not supposed to rage anymore. Her life is changing, blah, blah, blah. Well, if you're changing your life, why not focus on the positive things, Foodie? Why are you still raging like you've done a million times before? Why the same old crap? And bringing Gary's name into it, which, by the way, ma'am, you should keep his name out of your mouth. It's far too clean. It's far too honorable to be in that filthy mouth of yours. But let's get going because I got some stuff to say. Barely once in a while. Um, I barely, barely read them. So I'm just going to turn them the fuck off. And they'll You know, she lying. We're starting off this stream lying. She's lying. She's lying. Oh, I barely read the comments. Bullshit. Bullshit, you don't read them. You read your comments. You read the comments on the live streams and the comments for those live streams. You watch the panels. You watch everybody's community posts. You watch Twitter. You watch everything because that's your life. Being on YouTube, being on the internet, you're such a narcissist. You're so starved for attention that any attention to you is good attention. You want to know what people are saying about you. You want to know the reactions. So your eyes are everywhere. So what do you mean you don't pay attention to the comments? You barely read them. I've seen you reply many times over to those comments. Why are you lying when you don't have to? But go ahead. Keep going. I'm ready. Those people can F off. You know, like, go away. Go hate somewhere else. You're bullying and you're stupid. And now... Poopa man, uh, West Virginia is crying a river. Like you sit there on your panel and you bully people and you're going to cry that you're not, that you're being bullied too or what? I don't know. Excuse me, man. What the fuck are you talking about? What are you talking about? Gary does his live streams on his panel. I'm sorry, on his channel. He doesn't do panels on his channel. And right now he just did a live stream where he was explaining a situation to everybody. So why are you so fired up about Gary? Why? Why? The whole live stream was to explain the situation of what's going on with him. It wasn't reacting to you. It wasn't reacting to Natter. So you putting his name in your mouth, inappropriate, very inappropriate. But that's part of your brand, isn't it? Being inappropriate, offending people, being gross, being the most toxic, irritating, triggering channel on YouTube. That's your, the foodie beauty brand. It's not about sunny, happy, positive content. It's about being a total B and getting away with it, which you do. You absolutely do. But you shouldn't speak on Gary. He doesn't do panels on his channel. He does live streams. He's yet to do one panel. So what do you mean? And so what he's been bullied. A lot of people have been bullied. Why are you ragging on him for that? I've been bullied in my life, but I dealt with it the right way. But you, on your channel, you're always talking about bullying and shaming. Oh, you're bullying me. You're shaming me. Foodie, you're the biggest bully on fucking YouTube. You bully your own VIBs. You bully your own members. You use the tactics of intimidation to scare people to shut up. 
Oh, if you don't shut up, I'm going to block and be in you. That's what you do. Say what you I want you to say, or I'm going to get rid of you, which honestly, I don't see if somebody got blocked, how that would be a loss. I mean, what are they losing? Access to you? What do you offer your channel? Nothing. They can find better stuff elsewhere quite easily, but keep going. Keep going, Foodie. Oh, I can't with the hypocrisy on this platform. And then it was HelloFresh. I put that on my list to cancel. I just I just postponed HelloFresh for another month. So anyways, I want like the comment I posted on my community post, I hate these kind of people. They're so ignorant and disgusting. Like why would your situation, just because it's a little more serious or different than someone else's, that you have any, any reason to judge someone else's situation based on yours? That's your life. This is my life. So just because I don't have kids with people act like, People's hate for me judge clouds their judgment. People are willing to sympathize with some with like abusive behavior just because they hate me. Or they're willing to, do you know what I mean? Like their situation is the prime example of a, what the fuck is a real survivor? That is bullshit. You know what, Foodie? I'm calling you all the way out. I'm going to call you all the way out right now. I've done it before. I'll do it again. I'm calling you all the way out, madam. All the way out. You are not a victim. No matter how much you try to paint that picture because you desperately want everybody to believe it, you're not a victim. You're not. I don't know what happened between you and Natter, but you yourself have said you're an abusive person. You've been verbally abusive, at least. And I suspect that you're also maybe physically abusive as was he. None of us were in the room to see who did what at what time, but you're always trying to paint yourself the victim. You were never the victim, never, because you chose to be around Natter. At all times, you chose to be around him and you chose to keep going back and you chose to keep spending money on him and supporting him. And you put him on a public platform where he was, ex you were exposing him to all those women knowing what he was, knowing what he does, knowing what a bad person he is, you did that. You did that. I've been through the shit that you're claiming that you've been through. I've actually fucking been through it. And I'm looking at you. I don't believe you've been through anything. You've been through SA? Then why the fuck are you on YouTube running around half naked? You've been through SA and DV? But yet you can come online and talk about all the details with no problem in front of strangers. Something that a real DV and essay victim would have so much trouble doing just talking about with one person. And here's another thing. He's an abusive person, but you're not afraid of him. You're not afraid. You feel so comfortable with him that you keep visiting him. You keep talking to him. Another thing that points to bullshit. Another thing, sorry, some of us who've been through it are looking at you and saying, nope, didn't happen, did not happen. There's no fear when you're around him. You're supporting him even now, running around half naked on YouTube, showing yourself off. Girl, no, absolutely not. But you would know these things because you've never been through those things. Yeah, you big liar. You just took those things and made money with them on YouTube. And that's disgusting. That is so disgusting to exploit the suffering and the pain of other people for profit. But for you, nothing is off limits. It's all free from monetization. All of it. I've been through that shit, booty. I've got the memories. I've got the scars. I've got the experiences that I'm working past. Even now, years later, and what you're doing on YouTube, it, you continue to talk about it. Continue. You won't shut up. You keep triggering people. You keep bringing this shit up. And you don't care how it affects others. You just don't. And you're doing it for money. You disgusting creature. Disgusting. I need real Survivor t-shirt merch. 
I need real survivor t-shirts. You haven't survived shit. Girl, I could sit down with you and I could tell you the things that I've been through in life. You would be ashamed to paint yourself a victim. You would be ashamed to sit there and paint this picture. I've been through so much. You don't know what real pain is. You have no idea. Oh, the things that I could tell you, the things that I could tell my audience, they would be horrified. But I lived through all of it. And I certainly didn't bring it on YouTube and monetize it because that was that's horrible. That's horrible to do, to trigger people for the sake of a little bit of coin. You got no problem doing it. No problem. None. What's a real survivor? No matter what you do, if you got out of a toxic relationship, good for you. You should be you should be lifting other people up. If you got out of a toxic relationship and you how the hell are you gonna judge another woman in that situation? I'm judging you because you ain't been through shit. You haven't been through nothing. All the pain that's in your life right now is stuff that's self-inflicted. All the bit of pain that you're going through right now, everything is self-inflicted. It all leads back to you. You got pain from the food? Well, it's connected to your eating problem, which you're not seeking help for. You got pain from Natter? It's because your dumbass won't stay away from him. You keep talking to him. You keep being around him. You keep calling him. You keep texting him. Da -da 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 about Natter, but yet you won't stay away. And then you get mad at us for calling you out. You get mad at us because we get irritated about hearing the same shit every day. Every fucking day for 10 hours a day. Are you joking? You are that person in the ocean floundering about in the water saying, I'm drowning, I'm drowning. People toss you a life preserver and you're like, nope, it's okay. I'm all right. I'm not really drowning. I'm, I'm okay here. Okay, then, then stop making a ruckus in the water. Just sit there and, you know, pat, dog paddle. But don't make a ruckus. Just do your thing or keep it private. One of the two. We're tired of the same bullshit. We're tired. Stop bringing it to us. Stop bitching about Natter. He don't love you. He never was in love with you. This shit is done. It's overdone. It's burnt. It's in the garbage. Move on. It's ridiculous. Like. I don't know why my situation is so weird just because it's like because I'm weird like seriously how can people not see that I fell in love with this man like I wasn't gonna be okay you know what I'm gonna bring up a situation that just happened recently y'all remember that rage stream she did where she put in the title she was gonna call his probation officer can I just let y'all know if you have someone around you that is abusive and she's described him in many abusive terms saying he did this, he did that. One thing you do not do is taunt your abuser, poke at them, purposely get them angry. If you're really scared of them, you won't do that. So she got mad at Natter for not giving her attention. And she did that rage stream where she's like, I'm, I'm going to call your probation officer, blah, blah, blah. She was poking at him. Poking at him hard, threatening something legal with him. If she were really afraid of Natter, really afraid, she wouldn't have done that. And if he had abused her seriously, physically, she would have been afraid. But she has no fear of this man to the point where she still wants to be with him. She's obsessed with being with him. Sorry, don't add up. Abusive relationship. I kept going back and forth because I fucking loved him. I'm not the only person to do that. Like, it's ridiculous. The ignorance. I'm never unblocking you, ever. And I'm going to be blocking more people. Good. You know what? I hope you block more people. And I hope the people that get blocked, they wake all the way up and realize, what was I paying my membership for? Like, what am I getting for my money? A person who rages half the time, complains about Natter the other half. Like, what am I paying my money for? What entertainment is this? I can go to a reaction channel and watch for free and not pay the $5 and be more entertained.
yeah, I hope that happens. I hope people drink that woke coffee by the gallon and they realize it's not worth it, man. The juice ain't worth the squeeze to go into a chat room and be verbally abused by this person, Foodie Beauty. I'm actually paying for her to abuse me verbally, make me feel like shit. When her coming into her chat room, calling people morons and you guys are stupid. And if you really got on her nerves, she will publicly call you out by your name and bully you and shame you talking about your appearance, talking about your age. Y'all paying for that over there? My question is why? When you got a choice, this is YouTube. You can go where you want. Why are you paying someone to abuse you? Why? I just don't want trolls in here. Sorry. Hey, Vans Beezer. Goodbye. Everyone's own personal situation is different. Exactly. They just want, yeah, they just want another, like, yeah. You are a Worm Sheriff fan, so goodbye. Hi, Big Korean. These are the same idiots cheering for him, and even after everything we all know about him, just because they don't like you. Exactly. At the end of the day, it's all going to come out in the wash, and whoever you were supporting, I mean, whatever. I'm not even mad that, like, I'm not mad. About, I'm just saying, like, it's ridiculous that people judge my situation based on their own. Like, you have your own life. Good for you. You had 800 kids with an abuser. You were friggin', like, just because you, it, you know what I mean? Like, how are you even going to even be a hypocrite like that? You know, it, every situation is different. But a lot of people who are in DV situations, they cannot leave because they have nowhere to go. They have no money. They have no one they can move in with. They have no resources. They feel trapped. That was a situation with me. I was living with somebody and I had nowhere to go and no money at the time. And I was stupid. And I thought, if I just hang in there, this person will wake up one day and they'll realize the harm they're doing to me and they'll 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 have that epiphany and they'll change and guess what it never changes because the more they do to you the more you let them get away with the more they'll do next time until they push it into dangerous areas where your life is threatened that's the reason why i left my ex because i knew that if i stayed any longer there were three possibilities jail hospital or dead there was no walking out quietly. There was no just party ways in a friendly way. It wasn't going to be possible. You know, a lot of people are under the impression, why don't this, why don't the, why doesn't the victim just go to somebody's house, right? Go to somebody's house to get away. Because sometimes the abusers, they track you down and they make a ruckus. And then the person whose house you're in, they're like, well, I'm not going to lose my house because you're here. And then if you go back to your own house, this th things can get dangerous. Foodie's situation is completely different. She was never trapped with Natter. She never lived with Natter. There are no kids nor pets involved here. They share between them. No finances shared. She literally went to go see him each and every time. She made that choice to spend the night with him, to get the hotels, to get the motels, to take him on trips. That suggests there's no fear of that person, no fear at all being hurt. And she claimed that he was being abusive. Well, if there was abuse, she wasn't afraid at all, to the point where she felt comfortable to do those things. She had the choice at any moment to walk away, to stop seeing him, to stop talking to him. Yet she wants to compare herself to other abuse victims. And she desperately wants to claim that she's part of that group. I don't know why anybody would want to claim to be part of that group. It's horrible. It's horrible to have to go through that. I don't know why she wants to wear that badge. For sympathy, for pity. Be happy if nothing happened to you, foodie. Be very happy that you don't have those experiences that haunt you. Be very fucking happy. 
to not go through that. Stop being so fucking desperate to be part of that group. Trust me, it's not fun. It's so stupid. Even if somebody else has it worse, you still have the right to be upset about your trauma. Exactly. 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 And oh, it's only trauma when it's convenient for you? No, it's only... Oh, my God. Like, every woman in an abusive relationship goes back. It Like, it's never... It's Like, these women... Women are manipulated into relationships. It doesn't start like that. You don't go into... You know what? You're right. People in abusive relationships end up going back. But the number one reason why they go back, yes, there is that emotional attachment. But the number one reason is because they have nowhere else to go. They're without hope. There's no resources, nowhere they can run to, no money to run with. And especially in cases where there's kids involved, it gets really complicated. It gets messy. That's why, foodie, none of that applied to you. None of it. You meet a man and he fucking starts smacking you around. That doesn't happen. Okay? Thank you. And like that thing I posted on my story, it's true. You're not ruining someone's reputation. They ruin their own with their actions and by not taking accountability for it. So I don't care fried cheese, fries, cheese curd. I will lose money. Actually, I won't lose money. I have more money this month than ever. And guess what? New people who are positive are going to replace the annoying trolls I'm tired of. Absolutely. You know what? She's right. She won't lose money. She won't lose money because she's going to continuously talk about Natter and DV and essay to make money. That's exactly why she talks about this shit, because it makes her money. That's why she refuses to stop. Not because she's traumatized. Not because of that, but because it's too profitable. That's why she keeps going back over the same topics. Those topics that she brings up all the time make her money. Otherwise, she wouldn't talk about it. So she talks about DV and essay because she knows. There might be people in her audience that have gone through that. They're going to listen to Foodie. It's going to resonate within them. They're going to feel a kind of sympathy and pity for her. And they're going to offer up money like, oh, I've been through, I've been through that, Foodie. I relate. She's looking for that financial compensation for her lies. Oh, I'm a victim. Feel sorry for me. Toss some money at me. That's basically it. So see you later. Not being unblocked ever again. New direction, new arc, fucking glow up. And yes, this is a rage. And it's a righteous rage. It's fucking needs to be said. And you know what? You rage, I'm going to rage right back at you because I'm in the mood. I'm in the mood, foodie. You're talking about this shit again? We're going to go together. Let's go. Hi, Tiff. Victim shaming of any kind is fucking disgusting. Oh, but you shamed me, didn't you? You shamed her, right? And you made fun of FFG, didn't you? She'd been through DV. How dare you? How fucking dare you? Victim shaming is wrong, but you shamed two victims, foodie. Two. No, negative feedback is not hate. Goodbye, machine gun. Hate, obsessive hate, is not feedback. Okay? Thank you. And I don't need feedback when I'm talking to you about trauma. That happens in my life. I don't need fucking feedback. No, I don't. And you know what? You really shouldn't be talking about trauma with your audience to begin with, madam. You really, really shouldn't. This is not the place. This is not the time. If you have something going on that is considered trauma, if it's severe, if it's triggering, the best place to do that is with somebody who will understand and offer up advice, offer up counseling, a professional. Dumping all this shit on your audience is wrong. What can they do for you? Can they fix your trauma? Can they help you? Can they heal you? No. All you're doing is triggering other people for the sake of profit. You know what you're doing in your live streams? You're walking up to those people who've been through that similar trauma. You're walking up to them, taking a virtual knife opening up all their scars, letting them bleed and saying, bleed for me and make that blood turn into dollar bills. That's what you're doing. You're triggering people and you are hurting people all over again for whatever trauma they've been through for the sake of you getting some money in your pocket. That's disgusting. 
That's disgusting. You got some trauma, go to the right people and discuss it, work it out, do what you got to do. Don't bring it here. Because you've been exposing this trauma for months. Has anything changed? Have you healed yourself? Has things gotten better? No. And you know what? It's not going to get better as long as you keep going around to and talking to the person that you claim gave you the trauma in the first place, dumbass. Stay away from him. Stop talking to him. Stop being around him if you want to heal. You got to separate yourself away from the situation at hand in order for there to be any healing. But you just can't stay away. You keep watching his live streams, texting him, talking to him behind the scenes. We all know you're still doing it. That's pretty obvious. And you keep bringing him up, bringing him up, bringing him up in live streams. How is that helping you heal? You're keeping him to, in the front of your mind where you're always thinking about him. Your behavior does not make sense to me. You say you want to heal. You say you want to be better. And yet you keep going on about the same things with a bunch of strangers on the internet that cannot and will not help you because we are not in a position to help you. We're not trained professionals. We're just people with ears attached to our brains that we can't plug up whenever you start talking about this shit. I'm telling you what I went through. You didn't go through it, so you don't really have an opinion on it. You are not living my life through my lens. Righteous raging, exactly. Oh, you mean that filtered lens? That one? I would rage too if I were you. Well, hi, Nun. <clears throat> hey, Vegas doll. I'm not going to be, I'm going to like say it, say it right now. Honestly, like this has to happen. That'd be so much worse than you. No one knows but you exactly. The Bible says there is such thing as a righteous anger. <laughs> Just bees, exactly. I just want to bees, and honestly, I just want to like move on and. Then move on, please move on. We want you to move on. We want you to. Everybody wants you to. The reaction channels want you to. Your audience wants you to. Your VIBs want you to. You keep talking about it, but you don't do it. You talk about the same triggering toxic shit over and over again. Move on, madam. Move on. Go west, young man. Go south if you need to. Go somewhere. Just don't stay in the same place. Talking about the same things. Keep it moving. That's the problem with your life. It's stagnant. It's completely still. There is no movement. There's no change. There's no nothing. And you're driving us all nuts with this crap every day. Stop it. They can hate you, but why do they need to tell you over and over? No, it's okay for them to hate. And then, you know what I mean? I'm not raging. I'm just actually, um, I don't need to be, I don't need to be patronized by you either, super cheese. Like people who come in here and fucking have a problem with what I talk about on my own channel. That's not going to be a thing either. That's not going to be a thing either. Trust me. I can talk about whatever the heck I want. I'm not friggin' disrespecting anybody. I'm not attacking anybody. But I get attacked every single day. Every single day. I did my weigh-in today. Do you know how many people reacted to my weight? Why is my weight even a thing? Because you lie about it. Because you lie in general. You over there trying to act like you're 330 pounds. Ma'am, you're not. And I'm not being rude saying that. I'm just being truthful. I'm being more truthful than you. You know you're in the 450, 500 pound range and you mess around with that scale to make it lie. You know you do. Don't know why you're lying about your weight, but you do. You do. You know, you're living in this fantasy world. I'm 330 pounds, despite the fact that I eat 10,000 plus calories a day. We know better. We're not stupid. That's what people hate about your lies. You treat the audience like they're stupid. You think you're the smart one in the room? No, ma'am. No, you're not as smart as you think you are. You're not. Because if you were a smart person, you'd have your life together. You would have your head together. Your life wouldn't be in ruins every which way. Obviously, you're not that smart. Or if you are a smart person, you're acting stupid. And that makes no sense. Because why would a smart person act stupid all of the time? We all act stupid sometimes. 
but not all of the time. And certainly we don't have a life that's in ruins if you're intelligent. You and your smug attitude. I'm so smart. I, I can lie and people will eat it up. No, we're not eating it up. We're not. And we get pissed off because you treat us like we're stupid. We're not stupid. We're not stupid, Foodie. Like, why does that matter? Oh, no, I'm fat. It's fat. I'm round. Get the hell over it. Why do people even still, like, who cares? It's ridiculous. Oh, my God. <laughs> like, hi, Lambo. I'm blocking everybody. Go ahead. Go ahead and block everybody. You know what, foodie? I would love to see that day. I would love to see the day. But you open up your chat. And it's like maybe your holy trinity. You got plain cheeseburger, Lambo, Sofa King. Those are the only ones there. And you say, where is everybody? And nobody else comes in. I would love to see the look on your face when you realize that all of your beezers are fed up with your shit and they're not going to take it anymore. Then maybe you might get it through your head. You can't act the fool on YouTube and get away with it. That your beezers are not people that you can have in your chat room and abuse verbally again and again because they'll sit there and take it. I'm going to cheer for the day when they realize that they're in an re abusive relationship with you and decide, I don't want no part of this. I will go on YouTube where I can be appreciated and I can enjoy myself. So go ahead and keep blocking. Go ahead. Let's see what happens when you block too many people. There's a difference in a rage and standing up for yourself. I hate brainless people who just like get a job yourself, get a hobby yourself. Oh, is she gonna rage right now? That's all you do. I wanna rage. Are you fucking rage junkies? Go to rehab, Jesus Christ. And you manufacture rages for the sake of profit, and then you're a dummy, and then you delete the rages, which could have gotten you a lot of money on your channel. So tell me again about how intelligent you are. You look bigger in Pete's phone. No, like, give me a fucking break. It's the same effing thing. There's no filters. Shut the hell up. I'm hot as a fat person. I'm pretty and you're fucking jealous. I make good money doing whatever the hell I like to do. Pick uh, correction. You don't make good money. You get money from other people. You don't go out and work for your money. You don't work at all, period, on YouTube. You don't even make great content. You don't work, foodie. You sit on YouTube and you expect people to give you money. You feel entitled to it. Don't use the word work unless you're actually working. Kicking my ass and you're jealous. Stay mad. That's your only problem with me. And because of that, you're willing to, to condone disgusting behavior from other people. That's on you. That's your karma. You're blocked. I'm living my life. Goodbye. You've been harassed by reaction channels and haters for a while now. Yep, I'm over it. Bye. And so, <clears throat> fat and hot are not synonyms. I'm just saying it's because of that, that people discuss your weight. No, it doesn't matter what it is, Tweety. They always find something to discuss my weight. Doesn't even matter if I look a bit bigger in pizza's videos. Who cares? You know what? Let's talk about being hot or attractive for just a moment. You could be very attractive as a bigger woman or a man. You'd be very sexy as a bigger woman or a man. It's not about your body size, foodie. It's about your attitude. Your attitude sucks. You are repulsive with your attitude, with your hygiene. You're running around with all kinds of viruses and parasites that are left untreated. And yet you're running around in the dating world, spreading that shit around. When you should go to a doctor and get that fixed. You have no business opening your legs for anybody until you get that fixed because you are the walking nightmare that all single people hope they never meet and be intimate with. And again, I'm not talking about your weight. I'm not talking about your body. I'm talking about the fact that you aren't even healthy. That if somebody did have sex with you, they might catch something. And you're obsessive and you're clingy and you're controlling. You are the nightmare that other single people who are looking for a mate in life hope they never walk across, period. Like, what do you want me to do? Like, I'll put fat filters on. You know what? 
Is you there an do. offer for fat filters? You already do. I want to put a fat filter on. You I want do. an extra chin. I want to piss you off with my weight. Hi, Kate Bella. Because <laughs> if my weight pisses you off, I want nothing more than to piss you off. Do nothing it. more. You know what? Take the filters off on your phone right now that are on. Let's see how you really look. You don't need a fat filter. Just show us who you really are. If you are big, beautiful me, and you are proud of yourself, and you feel confident in yourself, prove it. Take all the filters off. Let's see the real you. Do a whole stream of nothing but the real you. I bet you won't do it. Thank you. Clean cheeseburgers. Who's Amy, baby? Oh, does someone send a super chat in this? So I wanted to get that off. Those comments pissed me off. I'm turning them to comments off. Like, like, oh, I'm a real survivor. Real survivor? Really? Do you want a cookie? What's a real survivor? You wouldn't know because you aren't one. There, I said it. What the heck is a real survivor? That is the dumbest thing I ever heard in my life. A person in a, that was in an abusive relationship is shaming another person because theirs was a little less. Get a life. Your trauma, you don't have a right to judge someone else's trauma and how they react to it, right? You blame me for doing that with Monty? Well, guess what? Hypocrite. There you go. Just because it's me. I can never do anything right. So go watch someone else. It's not about the trauma, Foodie. It's the fact that you lied about it. That's what everybody hates, the fact that you lied about your trauma. You lied. Straight up, you lied. I that still blows my mind. The fact that you, you made all those live streams before you got everybody concerned for your welfare and you were giving so much detail for hours and hours. Oh, he's a scary person. He's got the black eyed rage and da, 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 da for hours. Like I said, no real person who's been through DV and essay could be able to do that with strangers. It would make them too uncomfortable. Yet you did it so easily so easily and so eagerly for those super chats and the membership signups you just kept on and on and on and on with it it's not about the trauma foodie it's the fact that you lied about it and those of us that have been through it we know you lied we know and no matter how desperately you want to claim to be a victim of those things you're not you're not they're more obsessed with me than their own world exactly what did you want me to call you again, Bridget? I forget. <laughs> God. I don't know why they love talking about filters so much. Because they can't handle that I'm hot. They can't handle it. Okay. So you're hot. Question. If you're so hot and you've got so many guys chasing you, why haven't we seen them? Why are we always hearing about made up characters? Why are you staging your bedroom to look like you've had sex? And it was so obvious it was staged. The condoms wrapper on the middle of the floor, the unused condom on the shelf when it should have been in the bathroom after being used. The sheets that didn't even look messed up, the pillows on the bed, girl. Anybody who's ever had sex know that things would not look that way if you really did something, come on. You're so desperate to prove to people that you've had sex with somebody. Let me tell you something. When you really do have sex with somebody, it's not that big of a deal. You don't make a big show or spectacle of it. You know, you're so desperate to show people you have a sex life. Guess what? Nobody cares. Nobody fucking cares. Nobody. Nobody cares if, you got, if you're having sex or not. It's your life. But you're so desperate for that validation that by having sex, by having guys run after you, you're worth something. Guess what? Here's a lesson in life you haven't learned yet. You don't have to have sex or have a sex life or have guys chasing after you to be worth something. Ta-da! There you go. And that's coming from a 51-year-old woman that you would consider to be ancient. That's a life lesson that I learned a while ago, and obviously you haven't learned it. And you need to. Stop seeking validation in other people. Seek it in yourself. And that way, it belongs to you forever. And nobody can take it away from you, foodie. Nobody. Like, oh, they think, I, like, seriously. 
<laughs> that's the gal you addressed in the comments. Oh, yeah, her. Okay, plain cheese. I'm super late. I should tell a chick. She'll be insta blocked. Extreme right. What? Hold on, I'm blocking someone else right now. Yeah, keep blocking. <laughs> I'm coming for you. <laughs> okay, so what was I braging about now? <laughs> Hi, Paneer Chick. A filter is not going to change that much. I know, people are stupid. Then do it. If it's not going to change that much, prove it. Take the filters off. Take them off. Be natural, Chantal. Be yourself. Be yourself completely. You won't do it. You want to know why? Because you've been staring at your camera with those filters on for so long. I think you honestly believe you look like that. And you don't want to face the truth. You never want to face the truth. You never want to face reality. You escape from it and you run from it at every opportunity. And as long as you escape from the truth, as long as you run from reality, your life is never going to change. Because change comes from facing reality, facing the truth, and dealing with it. Not ducking, dodging, and weaving it. <laughs> Funny. They're just stupid, exactly. I, I don't like stupid people. I hate people like this. And I do not want them in my life. She wants yes men. I like Ina Garden. <laughs> no one. I care. And the trolls that are supposed to like her are on other channels or in the humble form. They're just fucking stupid. The beads are cute. No, I haven't, Jules. I you keep blocking. Goodbye. I'm blocking. And I will make new positive people. Don't worry about it. I have no problem. I've built my channel from the ground up without having to rely on anyone's effing name for clout. Can anyone else? You know, Chantal's success long ago came from the fact that at the time she started her channel, the mukbang thing was very, very popular. It was starting to take off. So it was one of those right time, right place situations where there was a trend going on and she likes to eat. She started doing mukbanging and that's where she built her audience. And once upon a time, she was not as awful as she is now. And people got into her. They looked at her as being relatable and believable and human. And then over time, the more money she made, the more she started to tailor her content and her behavior and herself to make money until what we have right here in front of us arrived. This person who exaggerates everything, lies about everything, makes up stories, comes up with story arcs, brings the drama, all of that is money motivated. Monetizing Chantal and monetizing her channel was the worst thing that could have happened to her. Because it just gave her so much freedom to be an awful person, get paid for it, and get away with it. Who criticizes me say that? You stop talking about me? Or even matter, and your channel will tank. Ha ha ha. Really? You think so? You think so? You really think so? Yeah. Okay, keep thinking that. You and your ego, keep thinking that. Foodie, I know several channels. They're starting to branch out with their content. They cover different people because they know the footy beauty train is not going to last forever. They know, they know. I mean, you're not reliable. Your health is bad. Your actions are worse. Everybody knows in the reaction community, you are not reliable, that you may not be around in five, 10, 15 years. So you can't build an empire on your back. So the best thing to do is you know, build a different foundation with different things. And there's lots of things on YouTube that we can react to. There's all di different kinds of things we can do. There's lots of creative, wonderful, smart people in the community that are funny. We can talk about other things. I plan on doing gaming content when my computer gets fixed, which will be in another couple of months at the most. 
Maybe it'll be fixed tomorrow. Maybe I'll do a gaming uh, uh, chat uh, thing tomorrow. I'm waiting for it to get fixed. I plan on moving and doing all kinds of different content and branching out. I want positive content on my channel. You're nothing but negative. I want to show people something that makes them smile, that makes them happy, that makes them feel good after they're done watching it. Everybody knows you're not reliable. Anything could happen to you today, tomorrow, the next day. I'm not saying I want something bad to happen to you, but you're not taking care of your health. And with your behavior, you might go to jail for stalking, girl, because you can't leave Natter alone. So you're not the be-all, end-all of YouTube, ma'am. You're not the only channel we can cover. You're not the only thing we can react to. You're not the only thing we can do. You want to keep telling yourself that because you think, without me, they'll fall down. No, we'll keep going. You, on the other hand, if you lose your channel, what have you got? Nothing. You don't have a home that you bought. Your car's not paid off. It's about to go bust under you. You're far into debt. What would you do without YouTube? What would you do? Think about that. Plain and simple. Plain and simple. Thank you. Your chats are going to be more active if you get rid of the haters. Yes. I've been getting messages from people. I don't like, I just, I don't know. I just feel more mature. I don't know what it is. What? No, no, you're not mature. If you're sitting here on your bed raging again, you, you haven't grown up. Sorry. No, no, not buying it. Like. Mature in a sense, there's some things mature wise I will never change. I will always laugh at parts. And that's like it's a crime if I use filters. I know. Like, God. Ooh, it smoothed my skin a little bit more. Ooh. Oh, well. No, my fupa and my rolls are here. There you go. There, you want a thumbnail? Go. God. Hi, Terry. Beast triggers. Thanks, Beast triggers. I run the show, exactly. And you have a choice if you want to be in the audience or not. And I have a choice who I want in my home, like in my friggin' Beezer group. <laughs> Today is like Christmas Eve. They're going to run out of content. That's why they're like desperately like trying to. I don't know what's going on because I'm too far behind. I guess Pete's is raging at somebody. I'll figure it out later. Find something else about my weight now. They're going to go back to talking about me being fat now, even though they're friggin' fat and stupid themselves. Not the fat. No, they're just stupid. I'm so part of an troll, but I'm unable to watch as much as I want. Please don't block me. I'm unable to watch as much as I want. What do you mean? Why would I block you for that? A troll that had a dress fetish. It was funny. Some trolls are funny, but. <laughs> I've been having drama with my ex, but I'm getting over it. Ugh, sucks care. Like, I did mukbangs, and at the time, mukbangs were popular. Right. So maybe that's just how it, like, kicked off. Yep, that's exactly how it happened. I just said that. Right place, right time for you. You capitalized on the mukbang craze, and you kept it up. And in the process, you attracted the feeder fetish crowd, and they were happy to get behind you because they didn't have to go to a fetish website to see that stuff. They could just see it on YouTube for basically for free without paying a membership. That's what built your channel, Foodie. So I like got lucky maybe on that trend. You did. But I don't know. Like I don't feel like my channel hasn't really grown and very much, but it's been like stunted by drama and bullshit and just. No, what stopped your channel from growing was a combination of different factors. The fact that your channel just, the content has become very stagnant. And it's all about Natter. But even worse, the fact that you just, you keep going off on your own people. And so what happens is you gain a few people and then you lose some people. And then you gain some people and lose some people. That's why you've never hit 100K yet, foodie. Because you always keep going off on your own viewers. You're abusive to your own viewers. And they decide, you know what? I don't have to freaking be here. And before you start bragging about how many subscribers you got, little known fact for everybody, the number that you see on her page, the 92K, they're not all active accounts. A lot of those are dead accounts. If you took away the dead accounts and left what's really active, the number would be a lot smaller, okay? 
So a lot of that is dead accounts that were once subscribed to Foodie and they just don't watch anymore. Or maybe they're off YouTube. Mean, just not having a great work ethic and right. great attitude sometimes, I guess. But, <laughs> but I no want to just re I, I just want to like rebrand a bit, not rebrand, but like just. I don't know. I feel like I'm just taking my life in a different direction and I feel like that's probably going to affect my content and I want my surroundings to be that way too. You surround yourself with the energy you want. But you keep bringing the bad energy to your channel, Fody. You're doing it right now. So you want a different energy, but it starts with you. If you're going off on people and threatening to block and being a jerk, it starts with you. You're setting the tone for everything. If any members comment on your videos, and it's the same brainless amoeba losers, right, Danielle, who always comment the same thing. How can they comment if you block them? Because you are a piece of crap, hater, and you can leave. You're not invited. It is weird. Florida? Oh, uh, I think I would hate Florida. Do you think I would hate Florida, or would I love Florida? Don't go to Florida. I used to live there. I used to live in Tampa, Florida. That's my home. Don't you dare go to Florida. Don't do it. That's my home state. We don't want you there. <laughs> I think I speak for all Floridians. Don't go to Florida. Besides, you would hate it, Foodie. You would. You would hate the heat. You would hate the humidity. Girl, it is hot down there. It is so hot. Don't go. Just don't go. You're in Canada. You know, you're from the colder part of the country. You would hate Florida, especially in summertime. You would hate it. I don't know. I hate everything right now. I'm we starting my YouTube for my weight loss journey. I'm three and down six pounds, staying positive. No. Foodie is along the land in these parts. Just remember your boss and most of these haters have no existence without you around. Oh, please. I so hate that. I hate the fact that all of her brainwashed idiots over there think without foodie the reaction channels would die they would have no other content they'd be lost in space somewhere oh please are you fucking kidding me we'd find other things to do and we wouldn't have our time hijacked for eight to ten hours a day covering her are you serious we could easily cover something else and have a lot more free time for ourselves thank you talented video creator oh thank you bad boy tragic that's nice to say oh, good night, just leave. how what am I doing? I'm on a dating app. Be and you shouldn't be because you're not healthy. You shouldn't be dating anybody. But go ahead. If men ma reach out to me, I match up with them. They're legally of age by many years. So if it's two consenting adults, what does it matter? We're not getting married. I actually feel like I'm very self-aware and mature You're not. about the situation because I am actually making sure it doesn't go beyond that. Yeah, sure. You're looking for Natter 2.0. You're looking for a young guy that you can control. Let's be honest. That's what it is. You couldn't control Natter, so you're looking for a younger version of him that because you're a bit older, you can control him. You're looking for someone to control. That's all it is with you. You're not about love. You're about control, foodie. Always has been, always will be. Because, no, we don't have really much in common life-wise. It's right. just fun. Oh, yeah, I was saying, they were saying I was lying about my, th there's always going to be negative feedback. And the more popular you get, the more, but I just hate when. But you're not popular. And it's just founded on so much misinformation. And it's not just that, it's also that, like the victim shaming is gross. I'm sorry. Doesn't matter how I handled this situation at the time. The fact remains that shit did happen. I was in a very traumatic relationship or whatever for a whole fucking year. And you went back over and over again when you didn't have to because you weren't trapped with him. Just want to bring that up. I came on here and you know I was because I would come on here on live stream and freak out about it. Yes, for hours, days, weeks, months, you kept talking about it which if you've been through it you're not gonna be able to do that you can't talk about stuff that you've been through with complete strangers you're not going to be comfortable enough no you're not and 
no matter how I handle it or what I should have done, what I shouldn't have done, it's done. And now I'm dealing with it and it's over. And now I'm dealing with it. No, you're making us deal with it. You're not dealing with it. You're not doing it privately as you should. You are putting it in people's faces and saying, here's my dirty laundry, smell it. I'm not going to clean it. I'm just going to dump it in front of you and make you smell it. What's the point in that? What is the point of telling us all about the stuff that you've been through with Natter? Can we do something? Are we doctors? Are we psychiatrists? No. So what's the point of all of this? There is none, except that you want to make money. So two consenting. <sighs> These adult men are reaching out to you and your age is listed. You aren't preying on. Exactly. I don't lie about my age. I don't lie about my situation to trap these men. I'm not deceiving them in any way. So no, actually, I'm not a predator in any way. Do you tell them that you have all those infections that are untreated, that if they do anything intimate with you, they might catch something and then have to go to a clinic right after? Are you disclosing that information, Foodie? I seriously doubt that you are. No. No, you are 100% not. Thank you, Paneer Pondu. You could say you're going to take a shit and they will say she's a liar. I know. <laughs> British people, why? British people say bacon rashers. No, I'm kidding. I have a pen because I'm planning stuff. A planning pen. Sure. I troll that I have my... The way you describe things kills me. <laughs> Whatever. Your haters love calling me ugly for wearing makeup in my profile pic and a clown. I just want to eat and play Mario and go to bed and then go. Hey, Ethan, he has the food and get a man. <laughs> you know? Yes, black VIB shirt. Uh oh, she's got it all. Rat face. Where's this part where the pizza is going to So, that's sort of what I'm expecting. 40 episodes? Well, let's please have quite a bit, yeah. Uh, garbage and litter today. Yes. Right. I'll do it after I eat. You think I should? Or butter? Films. <laughs> oh. Really? Yeah. All star, that's the one. Uh, oh yeah, the shit one. Yeah. Which is why, like, at this point, it's more it's more famous for being bad. I'm just telling you. Block each other, and or else I will block you. I'm tired of it. Oh. Seriously. Go over it. I cannot even tell you. Right, Pete? Yep. We don't want drama here. I sure as hell don't. <laughs> it's shifting, right, Pete? Been tired of it for ever. <laughs> exactly, Pete. Oh. Stop shit talking, my friend. Or else I will block you. Thank you. You can ski on that bag. On my bag? I don't know more reality when he's ready, I guess. You can ask him. Right, Pete? I got your back. Yeah, she got your back, Pete. How many times has she talked about getting rid of you and the cats? I'm sorry. If somebody like that had my back, I wouldn't want them to have my back. Like one minute they're saying they support you. The next minute they're talking behind your back in a car, in a park, saying, it'd be better if we were separate and he needs to be away from me. Saying this away from him versus to him. You're not a good friend, Foodie. You're really not.
You just want Pete's around so you can use him and abuse him and control him like you do everybody else. But you know what, y'all? I don't know what else is going to happen with this live, but we're already at an hour. So we'll just cut it off here. If there's anything else I need to cover, I'll do it later. So sorry about all the spiciness, but man, she got me fired up talking about Gary, talking about the DV essay thing again. Can't stand that. It's inappropriate. It's happened too much, too long on her channel. And she just keeps doing it for the sake of money. It's pissing me off. So enough with that. Ha. Huh. Well, I hope everybody has a great day, a very productive day. And I'll talk to you guys later. So please take care of yourselves and be good today. All right. Bye now.